Jesus was feeding the 4,000, I think. And, uh, he, was, you know, he didn't want to send them away hungry. And uh, I thank you, Lord, that you always have something to feed us, <coughs> your children, Lord. We come to you with hungry hearts today. nutrients for your abiding life, Lord, in this day, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're all believers, so I wasn't sure what God was saying through that. Mm -hmm. But when I prayed into it, uh, I saw, like, when, when, when the fish came up, when we were going through the fish, the fish were kind of smelly, you know. We were cleaning off the fish, and I thought, <laughs> shut the door. <laughs> Jay. Jay's a troublemaker in the group. <laughs> um, but I, I felt like the net of fish represented the impartation today in this meeting this this mm -hmm. weekend to impart rest mm -hmm. to the world um that whether we're talking about fish representing salvation or just the call to just be mm -hmm. you know whether you're wherever you're at in your journey whether you've been a christian for 20 years whether you just become a christian recently whether you're a pre-christian you know whether you're someone who's adamantly <laughs> against the Christian faith, there's one thing we all have in common. We all have this deep need to enter into rest, to be comfortable in our own skin, to be to be able to just trust God and, and, and to be free of having to carry the burden ourselves of what it means to become a good person or to become a successful person or to become a recognized person. And I think that's the representation of cleaning off the fish, is we have the opportunity, the privilege, the gift of being able to convey rest to a world that is deeply struggling with striving and desiring fear. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get to jump in any time, or just like yeah? If you have something, yeah. 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 Um, and if you're not catching it, but in obedience to God, when God says to do something, um, that's where like my rest comes from. When you're just um, trusting in Him, and it's a place of like you kind of are kind of already been you're you're going through something, and it just feels like you're not gonna get anything. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I received the message <laughs> I just received mm -hmm. as a reminder of just like trusting in the Lord and there will be, um, and when we do it with him, it's, you know, something's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it's more like for hope, yeah. hope and trusting in, re in the rest. Yeah. Yeah. Why did Jesus say cast it on the other side? Because when they first cast it, there was nothing. 
There was lack. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. He's saying, don't live in lack. Cast your net on the other side where there's fullness, completeness, and wholeness, where rest is. Mm -hmm. You see? And so it's like renewing your mind to the truth. Mm -hmm. You see? Because it's full. It's full of supply. Mm -hmm. We have a totally supplied life. Mm -hmm. We don't have mm -hmm. a lacking life. Mm -hmm. We don't have a striving life. Mm -hmm. Not just the world is like that, but the Christian world is also like that, trying mm -hmm. to strive to become what we already are in Christ. So good. So anything wrong? <laughs> You're good. Don't say that. Okay. That's a, that's a wonderful image, mm -hmm. I think. Also, it reminds me of death, resurrection. Mm. <laughs> you see, it's a leap of faith from death and lack to resurrection and yeah. life. That's really interesting in that analogy you gave yesterday about how Jesus called Lazarus out of the grave, mm -hmm. but then he said, take off his grave clothes. Mm -hmm. The idea that that is symbolic, that's representative of, yes, we have been raised with Christ, but it doesn't mean we're not still wearing the grave clothes. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. We're still thinking like the devil, is what I say. We have the heart of Jesus. We're still thinking like the devil. Mm -hmm. That's what, and we have a deep dis deception in our consciousness. Deep, mm -hmm. deep dece deception. What we don't realize. And so it has to be, it has to be brought <coughs> out. And, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today. This yeah, deep yeah. deception. Hey, uh, did uh, Bill and I tell you, um, Mention about doing a quick recap of last night for people. Yeah, he did. Oh, but he just to, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. I just want to thank you, both of you all. Thank you, especially Tom. Mm -hmm. I just thank you. Oh, thank I appreciate you. you. So, I appreciate your spirit. I appreciate your dreams, and I love, I love it all. And I receive so much from you. Yeah. And of course, Bill. Bill, I've received from Bill for as long as I've known him, you know. And we almost are kind of the male and female side of the same person, almost, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. But he has his unique, wonderful way. And these one-liners and the way he imitates Norman, everybody oh remembers gosh. those things. Sometimes, if, you, if you're teaching and sharing, and it's so funny, you just remember it. Like sing song, you just remember it. It's if it's laced with humor, like our friend um, Fran Giles. You knew Fran. Yeah. She would say things like, "Frequent trips through hell burns the ugly off." That's why I'm so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so you remember it. Why? Because you, you you can connect us while you're laughing. You see. So it's. Humor is wonderful. It's wonderful. One, sometime I hope they do a little skit together. That's yeah, so I remember fun. Bill uh, did the uh, Norman uh, imitation of Norman's voice at the group, and and Bill's always like, oh, I don't know if she did, and they go, Yeah, do it again. Yeah, <laughs> he always says that little too, and we say, No, Bill, remember this? You used to say this. Norman said this. Tell that story. <laughs> you know, everybody wants to hear it, so it's really great. So I appreciate all of you all. I just love you all because I've always loved the body of Christ wherever wherever the body of Christ is because we really are just one person. We know that. Norman always said it like this. He said, there's only one person in this room. It's the Lord Jesus Christ in all these different forms like Paul over there, Paul form and Chris form and Micah and Jennifer and all the way around one person and there's really one mind that's why we can connect and you can bring something out and add to it to this and add add that to it and bring out a whole revelation love that i love it when we have our meeting in louisville a lot of times um w we never have like s some planned thing that we're all going to share or talk about but we just let everybody be free to however the spirit speaks with them and it ends up bringing together in some big point like everybody's got the same thing on their mind you know and they can bring it out in different ways so that's just precious the precious people of God I used to be on TV and I would start out by first I started out on the radio and I said um, 
uh, I said, let's see, how did I say it <laughs> now that I'm trying to remember? Um, no, he hello, this is, mm -mm, how did I say it? The Liberating Secret. You know, I would say, welcome to The Liberating Secret. I am Sylvia Pierce, and I'm here. And then I would say, uh, and, and I would say, I, how would I say it? I've already forgotten it. It's almost like, you know, to all, I'm here to, to minister to all God's precious people. All God's precious people. I said, do you realize how precious you are? Because most don't. They don't, you know, because of this deep deception in our consciousness. That's why we're going to talk about cleansed consciousness today. That's what we're talking about. Okay, but last night, and this is the way I normally do it. I normally do this first, and then what we did last night second. But, you know, we can mix it up in the spirit. That doesn't matter. You see, I love that. I knew somebody, and, um, and you know, you always think, are they a little children? Are they in the young man stage or in the fatherhood stage yet? You're wondering about it. And this person jumped from little children to fatherhood and missed the young man stage, like knowing who we really are. And I thought, I said to Norman, can you do that? He said, the Holy Spirit can mix it up any way he wants to. And that's the truth. That's the truth. So I just feel privileged to be with you all. It's been some years. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. And we're always get, trying to get him and him and you all, any of you all, to come to Louisville. In June, we have a family conference. We are calling it the Jesus Revolution. We just had one. In, because we feel like this, this truth is re revolutionizing the Christian world. It's rare, really. It's rare, really, to be able to, for, to be taught. And it, it, it should be taught everywhere. It mm -hmm. should be. It should be spread like wildfire and taught everywhere. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. So I was uh, scouring through the Treasures of Darkness book this morning, looking to see if there was anything in particular that I wanted to bring up as an addition. And what stuck with me is you were talking around page 40 about Hebrews 9 and 10, the conversation about we have received a clean conscience that mm -hmm. you talked about mm -hmm. in the Old Testament and sacrifices and a clean and broken conscience. That's it. That's, that's Hebrews chapter 4. So I mean 10. Yes. That's, that is, it's this, this cleansed consciousness, cleansed from dead works to serve the living God. Mm -hmm. You see, dead works, the fleshly dead works. That's what the Bible calls dead works, really. So, but I want to, I want, I'm going to say this first because this came to me as you all, you know, were sharing. In Hebrew, in Philippians chapter 3, just the first three verses, I'm not going to go all the way through. It says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write these same things to you is, not, is to me indeed not grievous, because we repeat ourselves. How long have we been saying these things? Over and over for 50 years or so, honestly. It's not grievous, never, because it's life-giving. When you're, when you're hearing a lot of information and you've heard it twice, you'll say, well, I already know that. But when you're hearing revelation and spirit teaching that really you can hear it over and over and it always has a new, new, it's new, it's new every day and it brings you alive uh, over and over again. So it, you're never, it's never grievous. And then he says, but to you it's safe. It is safe for us to be hearing these truths because we don't hear them really often, very often. And so, but, you know, and maybe it's meant to be this way. It may, and it's going to be word of mouth, probably. You know, this person here, that person there, this, this person. And one time I asked Norman, why can't we be in a big coliseum and why can't, you know, we, we be preaching these things? And he said, oh, it'll never work. Mm. And then somebody said, well, why can't the church take this? And, and he said this. He said, oh, darling, it's the only self we've ever known. Now, how can we... <laughs> give up the only self we've ever known our whole life not easily yeah. we can't that's the problem try to die to yourself see how far that works see that's another work that's dead works again 
So, and then it goes on to say, beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. That's the message. The flesh is not wrong, evil. It's just that we cannot have confidence in it. Well, your whole life you've had confidence in your flesh. What you do as a teacher, what you, you study you, to understand what you can understand, you can master. Is that true? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, even the quantum level, they're understanding all the unseen things. I say the, even the scientists are operating the things not seen, and we're a little bit behind. But you're right. We should soar ahead. Soar ahead. Operating the things not seen. You see, you're not going to be able to do that without a clear consciousness, a clean consciousness, a cleansed consciousness, one that's not inundated with the grave clothes of the past. Because it is ha past, and now we are a new creation, but we still go back in our consciousness to the old thoughts of separation. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I say we're, we're eating from, the, we're living in the tree of life, but we're eating bad food. We're still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the mind of Satan, of the mind of separation, the warring opposites, good and evil fight each other. There's war, wars and rumors. I always say it wasn't hard for Jesus to say at the end there will be wars and rumors of wars. The Bible calls us vessels of wrath before we're vessels of mercy. Mm -hmm. What else can wrath do but fight and war? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, it can't do anything but war. That's what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it is these opposites. Good fights evil and because the good in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is pharisaical good. Mm -hmm. And it fights obvious evil. So, and then they come and fight each other. Now, in the tree of life, there's a cross that unifies opposites. The tree of, of, new, of, of good and evil, they're fighting. Now, God unifies, unifies these opposites. It starts coming out in Romans 8, the unifying of opposites, the negative, positive, unified. And then it really comes out in 2 Corinthians when it talks about intercession. It absolutely comes out because, now let me just read you these little things before I'm, before I even start. Okay, 2 Corinthians 4, these are obvious verses. So it's not grievous to repeat, <laughs> you see, because we get new insight. Okay, because this is spirit and truth. This is spirit and truth. Okay, we know these, this verse, that we have the treasure in earthen vessels, because we always know it, we're the cup, not the coffee. You know, we know that that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Now listen, watch these, these two opposites unified as one. It starts in Romans 8, and I'll go back to that. We are troubled on every side, but not distressed. You feel the trouble. You experience it outwardly, but inwardly, you're not. You're in peace. You're in rest. You're not distressed. Okay, the, they unify as one. Okay, we are perplexed, confused. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what to do, okay? But not in despair because we live in rest. We live in the one who does know. It's good for us not to know. It's good for us to be blank. It's good for us to start out that way and be negative. I like starting out negative. You know, sometimes I don't want to do things or go places. Why? Because I know when I do, God's, God's in it, totally. And I'm not trying to figure up something to do. Are you kidding me? Most of the time, I don't want to do it. I like that. I like it. Okay, persecuted. Outwardly, this is outer and inner. But they're unified as one. Outerly persecuted and not forsaken. Never. Never leave us. Never forsake us. Never. You see, so it, everything, and people will fail us. Will they fail us? Our friends will. Our family will. And somebody that you trust more than anybody will fail you sometime in your life. You will. It will. You see, because it drives us to God only, to knowing only God, because he's the one that lives in us and manifests his life through us. You see, 
I can't compare myself to somebody else. I, I can't be like you. I can't be like you. You can't be like me. You be you. You see? No, you don't have confidence in your flesh. Well, that's good. That's perfect. But your flesh isn't evil. It's not good either. You don't have good flesh or evil flesh. You have neutral flesh. It's, what, it's, it's how you take it. Okay, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do with it. It can go either way. It's, it can go one way. It can go, it can go into sin. Temptation always can go into sin. But God can use it mightily. That's what I've learned. How that everything that comes to me is a potential form of glory. And how to reverse that. How to reverse it. You know, like you were talking about in your dreams, you do that even. You have prophetic dreams about people and then you reverse it. Absolutely. Okay, so I wanted to start with that, but then, oh, uh, let me, wait a minute, let me finish this. Cast down but not destroyed. But you see how these, the inner and outer, this is, now, now this is one. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. Same I. It's not when I'm weak and then Jesus is strong in me. No, nope, doesn't say that. Nope, same I. Outer and inner, now, now it's unified. It's oneness. It's one, you see? How, and that's why everybody knows all things work together. This is, this is when it's starting to unify inside of us, to understand oneness truly and become a consciousness of oneness. Okay, you know what it says. All, all evil... And all good, do they work against each other? They work together as one. See? The unified opposites, they work together as one in you. So instead of, oh, I gotta, you gotta resist, fight, you know, the negative and temptation. No, we learn how to embrace it. When you embrace it, then glory comes. Because all, everything that happens to us is a potential form of glory. Every, every, temp, every suffering, everything that happens is a potential form of you bringing, bringing through glory. Even my mother dying of cancer said, don't you, I'm not giving the devil one get, get a bit of glory with this. I'm not even going to say the, glo the devil. We're going to praise Jesus and don't anybody cry for me. <laughs> and she meant it. And at the end of her life, she said, I said, oh, Mom, you know, and I'm crying. Oh, no, Sylvia, no, Jesus. Oh, Sylvia, didn't you know what's happening? It's not happening to me. It's happening to Christ. He's laying his life down in me again. He'll bring life to you all from this, and that's exactly how it works. Life, death will work in us, and life will work in others. We know that in 2 Corinthians. So you are mature. So we have to understand how all that works. But let's, let's, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. And I can talk a little bit about soul and spirit because last night we really brought out the truth that we are spirit people. We're not fleshly people. We're not our flesh. Our flesh is beautiful, wonderful. And I say we have a precious humanity, precious, precious to God and usable of God. God wants to use us and be a, he wants to be the common you. He doesn't want to be somebody special. He doesn't. We all, we're all are special, but we don't. No, he, he's not looking for that. He's looking for teachers. He's looking for all the secular things, the acting. That's God in actor form. Both of you all. You see, this is Christ. He doesn't have to be sacred <laughs> and separated that way because God can move in anywhere. And I thought, I told my kids this. I said, you know, when I, and I'm 83, okay, so I'm headed, you know, where I'm headed. And I said, uh, if I get to the point where you have to put me in a nursing home, put me in a nursing home. Jesus can go to a nursing home. Are you kidding me? You mean Jesus can't do that? Of course he can. I won't want you to, though, I promise. I'll fight you, <laughs> but don't pay attention to me and do it. So, and that's the truth. Where can Jesus not go? I mean, Jesus and Paul and Peter and all of them went to jail and they're praising God. Paul is writing all of his letters from prison. And he says, I'm a prison to Jesus Christ. I'm not a, not a prisoner to Nero, I guess, who that's what the emperor was. He's, he, doesn't, and he doesn't put me in prison. I'm a servant. I'm a, in prison to Christ. 
Let me see. <laughs> we are. Because what we take takes us up and it eats us up. The zeal of the Lord eats us up. So you can't do anything else. You can't. You can't. I mean, even if you want to slow down, you, you, you can. I mean, there's, it's, it's a two, two thing. It's always two things. There's always a part where you want to, oh, I just like to be at home and kind of relax and not do anything. And then something comes, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. Okay, all right, I do. Okay, and then the glory comes. I mean, it just always happens that way. Because why? These are meant to be fit together. Actually, I, I have a slingshot because I think it's like that. And, it, and somebody made it for me because I teach it this way. Okay, here's a slingshot. You know, it's like a U. And it has the rubber. And when, when that rubber is pulled back, you get tension, right? Now tension, 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 tension. So how do you let go? People say, let go and let God. I say, you can't even let go. Right. All you do is start thanking him. As soon as you start praising the Lord, you've let go. And the power of that negative manifests into the positive and brings glory. So they fit together as one reality. we got to get used to that. Okay. All right, now, what about our cleansed consciousness? Well, let's turn to Hebrews chapter uh, 9 first. In chapter 9. There you go, Tom. Such a good host. <laughs> Some of the people didn't get the circle because they weren't here last night. Okay, they can get them, but they don't have to now. No, I'm not going to go over it yet. No. All right, I'm going to get there. But, uh, you know, even at Polly's, when, and she wants me to do these four eyes every, 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 every time. time. Every time. <laughs> every time. He I does too. Care. So, and, you, and he'll say, all right, Sylvie, are you go I'll say, well, we're getting ready to have a conference. Do you come? No, I can't come. He said, are you going to do it? Are you going to do Okay, all right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a standard. Why? Well, because it is, everybody says we're on a journey. Well, this is the journey that we're on, the self journey. What about the human self? Because we're spirit. We saw that last night. And in our spirit, is joined, we're joined to Christ in spirit. Okay. So, and that's true. That's spirit. But what about our thinking and our consciousness? Because deep in our consciousness is this lie of independent self. That I'm just me. I'm just me alone. I'm the one responsible. I'm the one that should do it. I'm the one that should try harder. I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one, I'm the one, deep in our consciousness. And so now I'm going to serve God through that. And really, I'm coming from lack. I'm not coming from, I'm coming from the wrong side of the boat. I'm coming from lack, you see. I'm not coming from fullness, see. So the Bible calls it dead work. It's work. But where's the spirit in it? Where is, is this Christ? Uh, doing it as us, through us? Well, we've got to know. We've got to know how that works because that's, that's, that's who you really are. You really are not just you. You are Christ in human form. And he lives his life as you. People say, how can you say as you? Well, I've got a little booklet in there, Christ as you. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I kind of prove it all the way through the Bible, okay? Because I, I have to have the proof here. I mean, how do we, come on, you know, I mean, anybody can preach and blah, blah, blah. Come on, we got to have it here. It can't just be jumping around to this verse. And it's got to be a constant theme of what God is saying in different ways. Well, we know Paul's message is that constant theme, constant. It's the same thing that we're teaching here. And I, I like to say this because this is in um, Romans chapter 2, verse 6. I think it says. Let me read that first. You all don't have to turn to it. Verse 16, chapter 2. In the day 
when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, Paul's gospel. I say, how many Christians really know, understand and know Paul's gospel? Because everybody gets hung up on Romans 7. Oh, yeah, see, see, we still have an old nature. There it is, proof, proof in Romans 7. That is not true. They're not interpreting right. Not by the Spirit. They're not. <laughs> and so, so everybody says, see, we're always living Romans 7 the rest of our life trying to do the right thing and not being able to be good enough. And I've got the will, but I don't have any power. Right. You think that's the Christian life? <laughs> <laughs> and when I try to do good, then evil is present with me. That's, that's the Christian life. I thought the Holy Spirit would, ought to be present with me if I'm doing good. No, evil. <laughs> yep, We're going to get to it. I like to say <laughs> things, clear. and yeah. then I'll explain it as I go. Right. Right. Learn the truth of the gospel. Uh, I, I can tell you, as the one who's been a Christian for 25 years, you can walk with God for 25 years and you'll stick to the set of the scriptures <laughs> and still get confused on a regular basis. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, God. Okay. Anybody can get confused in their soul, but we're, I'm not my soul. I'm spirit, where there's clarity. Confusion is only the evidence that clarity is on its way. But we get stuck in the negative, don't we? <coughs> See? <laughs> is that right? I forgot that. <laughs> You're jumping over there. Yeah, I am. I, my spirit is just like, okay. like fireworks. All right, let's read this scripture. <laughs> How much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Jesus could not get himself on the cross. He did it by the spirit. He did it by faith. He couldn't do that. He could not get himself. And we think, oh, I should be willing. Jesus was not willing in his flesh. It was resistance in his flesh. We have resistance. in our. That's not evil when it's used to, to manifest the opposite. And then he can say, not my will. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. And I always said, Jesus, you told us you didn't have a will of your own. How come it's popping up now? Because that's always what temptation is, making you think you have a separate will, a separate life, a separate me. That is the mm -hmm. temptation, you see. And so he was tempted like we are in every way. And he says, oh, no, 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 not, not that, not that independent will which would have been the devil's will. It would have been sin. Would have been the devil's will, you see. Oh, no. But Father's cup shall I not take it. All right, so he did it through the Spirit. Okay. He offered himself without spot to God. Why? To purge your conscience or consciousness. Same thing. From dead works to serve the living God to serve the living God. Serve, okay, all right, because, why? Because he's the mediator of a New Testament, a new covenant, and that's the next verse, says all that. All right, okay, our mind. Our consciousness is our mind, is our mind. But we have kind of a subconscious mind and a present mind, don't we? See, d deep down in the subconscious mind, you kind of automatically work th from that until you're released and you know the power of his resurrection has raised you into, you know, the, the, his mind. So otherwise, you know, you're still functioning the sa same way you did before you were Christian. And then people say, well, you know, I have to be like, Je I have to be like Jesus, mm -hmm. you see. I have to be like him. And I said, really? 
uh, Satan wanted to be like God too. He couldn't do it. <laughs> he tried. And he is the big independent self, mm -hmm. which is the big liar in the universe, the biggest liar and lie in the whole universe. And that's what's lying deep in our consciousness. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to go through the journey of how, what do I do? Okay, this self. We love Jesus. What about this self? What, what, who was I before I was saved? Now, that's a biggie. A lot of people, you know, they, they say, like you said yesterday, well, why were you, what, ha, what, why were, what were you saved from? People will say, well, hell. Okay, now what? <laughs> okay, right. now I'm going to heaven. And, of course, also the verse you quoted the other day, too, was from Romans, which I love, Romans 5, which says, much more than the blood of Christ, we shall be saved, that means delivered, daily from his by his resurrected life the only way we're going to be delivered daily and and live from that has to be his resurrected life you see okay which it already it we already have it we already have we have all this already we don't know it we're still functioning we're kind of like a lame duck you know we're half half and half you know we kind of we've got some but not the fullness and that's why this, you know, I'm like what you said. I don't want to hear Christian platitudes. I've got to know, how does this work out in me? Right. How does it work here? <laughs> how does, how does, how does yeah. Jesus manifest the fruit of the Spirit in me right here, right, right now, you see? Mm -hmm. And I'm not happy with if it's just, oh, this high and mighty. I mean, we, can, we all love the Lord. We all love to worship. We all love the Lord. We love Jesus. We love the Father. I love the verse in uh, second, second, no, yeah, second Corinthians chapter one. It says, we serve the Father of mercy. Mm -hmm. I love that. And the God of all comfort so that we're able to comfort others. I love that. The God of all mercy. You see, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort. Is that great? That, that proves to us whatever we're going through, there's always comfort. There's always an answer. There's always a release. There's always a triumphantly release. There always is. Okay, now let's look at uh, chapter 10. And, um, and I'm not going to go there first. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I changed my mind. Okay, I will go here. You know why I'm going to go in chapter 10? Because we're going to talk about the body death today. Mm -hmm. We know that the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. Do we understand that by his body death we're made holy, complete, lacking nothing, we're whole, un, unreprovable in his sight? That's exactly what Colossians says. In the body of his flesh, in, his, in the cross, you now were delivered from the satanic nature. I mean, why do people say we still have this old nature? Tell us that all the time. Okay, even the, some of the Bibles say it that way. That's a lie. That's not true about us. We don't understand, and we're just taking those grave clothes are still there. All right, now let's start at the very top. Okay, the, the top words are being. Now, I'm talking about before we're saved. We're just being ourselves, right? You're just being your sinful self. You didn't wake up every morning and figure out how to be whole, how how to how to serve Satan, did you? You don't do that. You don't understand what's your will today, Satan. You just get up and be a sinner. You're not trying at all, are you? No. You get it. You get what I'm saying. You're just being yourself. Else well, that's right. That's 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 all they can be, and it says they're they have their vessels of wrath, so they're mad all the time too, and usually at us. <laughs> that's true. Okay, now let's look at this. Okay, that's being, and then you look at the very last one. That also is being. Okay, but we're going to concentrate on the first one. What were we saved from? And I always. Bill quoted this last night, and I always quote it too. Bill and I copycat each other all the time because it's it's. I mean, it's just it's it's just it. Let's go. Okay, 
chapter 2 of Ephesians, and I'm going to start with the very first verse. I'm going to go down to 3. And, and you who he hath quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. That's past. You see, we need to realize who we were and now who we are. We don't, if we don't have that clear, you, you will, you'll, you'll say who you were is who you are now. <laughs> like you, you've heard that, uh, oh, you know, um, we're, we're desperately wicked. How, how does that verse go? You're desperately wicked, you know, and people preach that as if that's true about us now. That's a lie. That's who we were. We were desperately wicked. Not now. Okay. We were dead. We're dead men walking. I always say it like that. We're dead men walking. Why? Because we actually have a satanic spirit. We're born with it. Because like you said last night about losing our glory, okay, then are we just empty? No. No. What came, what came in in the place of glory was this satanic spirit was the spirit of error, the Bible calls it. And shame. And shame and fear. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You ate you ate from a tree that was grounded in the earth, dead earth, not in paradise. <laughs> you gotta know it was there was a tree there, but you're eating, okay, have we, are we not bound to this earth now? Mm -hmm. Do we have to eat from it? I mean, you eat healthy, but it's still of the earth. <laughs> yeah, really? You see? We're, we're bound, we have, and, and the atmosphere that we breathe, are we bound up to that? Yeah, we are. That's not how Adam was. Adam, well, I'm not going to go there. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go on here. Where in, in task in past times you walked according to the course of this world. What is the course of this world? It's, I'm just going to be for me. Chris, the hell with you, I'm going to be for me. Now, I'm going to hide that and be nice and try to sell you something or try to convince you. But honestly, I'm just interested in me, not you. <laughs> so I'll try to get from you for me. Even when I wanted my husband changed, I wanted it more for me than him. I wanted him changed so I could, wouldn't have to suffer. Right. It's all self-centered, self-centered. Okay, now I'm Christian. My, I still didn't have a cleansed consciousness at that time. You know, okay, according to the course of this world, but who is the prince of this world? According to the prince of the power of the air. We're breathing it in. That's why I take a breath and don't breathe in that and just see who we really are breathing in and out of we're living we're living in a whole nother dimension we're not live we're i mean yeah we have to have air i'm still human of course but we we have another breath we have another life another heartbeat you see okay we're uh, in the power the spirit that now that right now works inside not outside inside Inside the children of disobedience. Who's a disobedient person? Would they be somebody that's uh, in unbelief? Is unbelief? They don't believe in that their sins are forgiven. Are they? Yeah. Provision is provided for every person. You know, God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. Does that mean that everybody's already saved? No. No, it says to him that is to receive, to receive, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. There's a lot of universalists that take that verse and run off with it, you see, because we have the ministry of reconciliation. Well, people will say, you're, there, you're already saved, you just don't know it. Now, let me tell you what that does for you. It gives you a mental assent that you're saved. You don't really know it in your heart. Oh, yeah, they tell me, oh, that's right, I'm already saved. Mm, you, you haven't had a deep repentance, you haven't. You haven't surrendered your heart. You just got a new head knowledge. That's what that does. You see? <laughs> okay. There's a spirit that works in, and that's why I put a self there. An I is a self mm -hmm. with a satanic spirit in it. And look at the bottom. It says, I'm, but I'm operating as if I am just me. Right. Do I know that it's Satan in me? You think Satan is... Uh, 
telling you that he's in you? I think he's got himself hidden there, right? He's a hidden culprit, right? <laughs> but he disguises himself as you. He disguises you. Yeah, he, 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 want, he wants to be you. Let me tell you, God wants to be you, and Satan wants to be you, both. Now, God is you through the cross and through the power of the Spirit. He is the real you in you. He's not you. It's always not I. We never jump that, jump over that not I. It's always not I, but Christ. See, as long as we're here on this earth, there's always that, that bit. And so you say, well, who is it? Is it me? No, it's not. It's not I. It's Christ. Oh, then it's Christ. It's all Christ. No, I've got, I'm I. <laughs> See, but, so it's like you contradict yourself to get the reality. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual reality that has to be realized within us. Okay, so but we're so those that's the grave clothes that we take over in the new life. Mm -hmm. Okay, then then somebody comes, Billy Graham comes. You go to a conference, you go to, and you get and you find Jesus and you receive Jesus. And truly, the blood of Jesus does cleanse you from all sin, and you are a cleansed person. But still, deep in your consciousness, you have this deception that I'm just a me grave clothes. Okay. So, so now that we're Christians, now when we're not Christians, we're just being. But now that we're Christians, now we're, tr I'm going to try. Why? Now the truth is, see that C with an I, that's who you really are the minute you're saved, the minute you're born again. But we don't know who we are. We can even say, well, we Christians need to know who we are. We do. But do, do we ever understand that? What does that oh, mean? John, what does that mean? 14. It's like a cliche to people. 20. People know. use these terms and they're just, you know, cliches. You know, what does that mean? Me, it means, quote, I am in you. That is salvation. Mm -hmm. that's, sal that's the gospel. That's salvation. That's deliverance delivered from the satanic self, satanic nature, really. What is a nature? I call it the power source of our being. What empowers us? Well, we know the flesh. What kind of power does it have? It's powerless, yeah. isn't it? Right. Yeah. I mean, even AA says that. You know, it's powerless, you see. So we have to have the power of the spirit within us. We know that. We know that's all of our favorite verses, you know. The, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. It quickens our mortal flesh. We know that. We know it. Okay, but there's this problem we still have, this self problem. And so this is how we see things. Um, let me tell you this. Uh, I was going to a big mega church that's really near us. She goes to it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the pastor there called one of my friends to his office. She was, she, I thought she, oh my gosh, I went to her Sunday school class. They won't let the women teach the men. No, that's that thing. And then, <laughs> and then, so anyway, her class was just phenomenal. And, I, and the Lord says, now I don't want you to go. Why? Well, people, you'll draw people to yourself. This is for her. We have to really understand that. Mm -hmm. We have to really, who, what God has called other people to do, don't go in and try to take over. Right? <laughs> okay, so uh, I didn't, well, I had lunch with her and she, because she called me and I've got a problem. What? She said, the pastor called me into his office and he said, well, Nancy, we believe that Christ lives in us. And, he, and she said, pastor, I'm seeing something greater than that. He is our life. And he said, I will never have that in this church. Of course, that's the scripture. Christ, who is our life, mm -hmm. not a part of our life. So anyway, he was gone. And I thought, well, what does he mean, Christ in you? And that's when it came to me, exactly what you said last night. It came to me, Christ plus a performing me. A perf that's the deception, that big I. That performing self is that deception. Everything in life has been what I can do, how I can get the great grades, how I can pass the test, how I can learn, how I can, how, you see, it's confidence in our flesh. That's what we've had all of our life. <laughs> right? Right. All right, what is that big eye? What is that big eye? 
it's Satan disguised as me. And, <laughs> and you know what it's subject to? The law. Anytime that I think I'm an independent self, the law will be right there saying, okay, Sylvia, then do more. Try harder. Try harder. You can do it. You can do it. That's the devil's voice. <laughs> anytime, anytime. The law has its, has, its, has, has its work. It was the knowledge of sin in the first place. But now it's going to reveal this lie. The law is. It does, it, it's, it's here to really bring. It's what Paul discovered in Romans 7, really. He, you know, there he was, a great Pharisee, brilliant man, had it all, you know, and had all power. Everybody under his feet, everybody served him. You know, he had, he had, um, who did, what, who, who, he, who was he that he had killed? He had stoned Stephen. Stephen. He had Stephen stoned. And he could not get over, he was under conviction. He could not get over Stephen, the light coming on Stephen's face. And then God saying, you know, and then Stephen saying, forgive him that he knows. He's the same thing Jesus said at his cross as he was dying. That is greater than what Paul had. Paul is Saul. What he had was, I'm going to kill my enemy. And now Stephen is saying, forgive him. That's higher. That's greater than killing your enemy. Now you're loving your enemy. Oh, Paul didn't like it. No. You know what? It made, it made him guilty because he was guilty. First time he felt guilt. He thought he could keep the law perfectly. That's what he said, the Old Testament law. That's what it says in Philippians. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I kept the law perfectly. That's what he had to, that's what he had to die. To. He suffered the loss of all things, and that was one of them. And he suffered that in Romans 7, like we do. Because that is the Romans 7 syndrome. Trying to be good. Trying to be good. See, uh, Christians are not trying to be evil at all. <laughs> no, but we're trying to be good. And I, I said to you all, if you're not trying, some Christians say, I don't know why you have to try so hard. And you know what? If you're not trying, you don't care that much either. You have to almost. You have to go through a time where you try. Mm -hmm. Because if you try, you're serious. And I want to be right. I want to be manifesting righteousness. Mm -hmm. I, don't want to be, I don't want to be screaming at my mate and controlling everybody in sight. And I don't want to do all that. But I am doing it. And I, I don't know why. And it's the only way you can truly come to this revelation. Yes. Because it's not really until you get to the point where you cry out with everything in you. Whether you literally cry or not, you're like, I can't do this. That's I right. I can't live the Christian life. There's yeah. a part in your book, Treasures of the Darkness, where you're saying, you know, living the Christian life is quite a chore. It's like, you know, it's not just a matter of me overcoming my sin issues, but, you know, i got to be a good, nice person. Right. Like, on a regular basis. Right. Including people I don't like. <laughs> you know, and then there's the matter of, like, actually being a ministry for God, like, to minister to people, to prophesy or pray healing over people or, or just, you know, having a good attitude when I just am feeling kind of crappy today. It's like when you really try to live the Christian life, it is a cross. It people is. People will kill you. As long as you continue to really try to live the Christian life, it's inevitable. You reach a point where you're like, I can't do it. So you will be under the law even though the Bible says you're dead to the law. Yeah. A dead person can't keep the law, can they? No. I love what it says in Romans 6. It says, he that is dead is freed from sin. You want to not sin? Don't be under the law. Don't have an independent self. Realize that's a lie. That's Satan. That's Satan deceiving us deep in our, con so it just pops up without us even thinking. So how is that reversed? How is that reversed? Well, Paul cries out, who shall deliver me? But, but, but before that, let's go, let's look, think of this. So what really was his problem? He thought, if, well, maybe if I didn't have the law, then I wouldn't be so trying to keep it. Maybe the law is my problem. It can't be the law. Without, I'd, I'd have the knowledge of sin. I wouldn't have known I was a sinner. 
And I love it when it, you quoted this last night, too. And then, because Romans 7 says, sin has to become exceedingly sinful. You have to try until you're bloody. And so we do have to try. Like I told you uh, about our friend Brian Coatney, we've known for years and years. As long as I've known him, I've, I've known Brian. And he was sitting at my kitchen table. I was fixing coffee. And he says, okay, so this was years and years ago. It's like early 80s or something. And he said, okay, Sylvia, I see that trying is my problem. How do I stop trying? And I said, just keep on trying until you can't anymore. <laughs> so am I telling him to just keep on sinning until you can't anymore? Yeah, I really am. <laughs> Why? Because of what you say. We have to be so, it's like a fatigue factor. The fatigue is so great in us, we can't lift another finger to do another thing for Jesus. That, you see, so so how does it how does it how does it come in Romans seven? Okay, let's go there. No, I, I was going to say something that um, I was looking for breakthrough in my life, and I started like ten years ago, and I realized I was following every new Christian trend. Yep. So it would be like, oh. You have to go to the court of heaven. Not that there's anything wrong with it, mm -hmm. but I, you know, you have to do this. You mm -hmm. have to do that. And by the end, I just felt like ten years after that, I, if they were asking me, you know, you need to do three cartwheels and mm -hmm. do this, I didn't do it. And then there was always more to do, though. Absolutely. Yeah, and then the Lord said to me, "You love your daughter," and I said, "Yes." And He said, "And you want breakthrough for your daughter," and I said, "Yes." And he said, do you think I would have given up my son if you could have just gone to the court, court of heaven? Mm -hmm. If you could have gone to the court of heaven, I would have never put myself through what you went through. Wow. And then the Lord said to me, it is done. Wow. And then he said, you go from victory to victory. Yes, you do. You don't go from failure to victory. That's exactly right. So I had to <laughs> That's believe so That's that right. was already a breakthrough. It just has to manifest it. It has yes. to happen. Mm -hmm. but the light has to come. Yeah. Because we're but really halfway will, in darkness. <laughs> dimly. Happen, but, but it's been done already. It's, it's been done. Already did it. That's right. And that's a really important point because we get impatient. And so we go to the next book. We get the next book. We do that. Maybe this, well, maybe this will help. Maybe this. And all we have to do is... Go on the other side. <laughs> Throw your nets on the other side. And even Jesus asked if there is another cup. You know, he yeah, asked, right, right, you know, right. And if there have been is there any cups, way that I that I don't do this? Get the book of so and so. It's fantastic. That's going to take you there. Right. You know, no. It was the only way was a sacrifice. That's right. That so is right. What you just have to say thank you. Yes. He said, the cup the Father has given me, shall I not take it? The Father, he didn't say the devil's doing this to me. <laughs> right. He said, the Father's cup. And Isaiah 53 says, smitten of God. Wow. All right, that's going higher than what you're seeing. I'm not that on this level, it's not the devil and the working of the devil. You don't, that's, that's true. But we, we're just going higher. Mm -hmm. I think you were saying that. We're going to... We're going to a higher truth, a higher level, a, another dimension, really. Can I We're in the spirit dimension. What? Just along the lines of that, I had a union experience in the Bay Area, and then when I came down here is when the Lord ran me into you and Bill and Norman stuff through Bill and brought words to all of that and tremendous revelation. So this was in that time period. I was, I think it was in your apartment. And it hit me. I'm like, oh my God, all those conferences. I was flying, paying money, spending weekends. I don't know how many times I went forward. I don't know how many times I had desperate, to trying to get the one anointing guy to pray for me. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to somebody that's inside myself. Mm. He's in my skin. Mm. Wow. It's like, whoa. So in a sense, I was chasing myself. Yes. Oh, 
you know, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm chasing, man, where am I? And I've just been, and I'm talking with the great lengths, with the great lengths. No but that's clue. so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's it, wonderful. It scared the daylights out of me I know when it. light went up. I'm like, oh my God, he's in my skin. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> anyway, so I just wanted to carry them around all that all time. That time. <laughs> the whole time. You're trying to find time. what you've already got. Yes. Oh my gosh. What a wonderful. Not looking for a tail. Yes. That's right. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm exploding. All right. I'm doing really good keeping my mouth shut this entire time. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Sylvia, I just wanted to, something you said just reminded me there's this prophetic voice. I don't know. And he's got it. And. Uh, he said, quit trying to live for God. Realize he lives for you mm -hmm. and through you. And I always kind of equate that with that, that image of a hamster wheel. You know, mm -hmm. the best religion, the hamster on the wheel. You know, and <laughs> you, you look at it and you, you, you look at the hamster. Now the hamster's dead. Mm -hmm. um, the wheel's still turning. You know? Yeah, right. And I thought, that, that, that's, That's good. Amazing. That was it. That was me. I'm the dead end. <laughs> yeah, you're dead, but that wheel keeps on turning. Right. <laughs> that is great. That's great. And any time the devil tells you, no, Bill, you're still alive, so you jump on that wheel again, and it goes around. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm dead. That's right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I remember now. I'm dead. And then you die, but the wheel keeps turning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Far beyond our ability to endure yeah. that we despise the That's right. Felt. Right. Oh, wow. But these things have happened so that we might not depend on ourselves. That's right. But on God who raises the dead. That's right. Wow. And, and that's the whole point of the trying. Yeah. Is it's pressure. Mm -hmm. It's the pressures of life, the pressures of trying to live a good Christian life, the pressures of just. You know, I, I'm always amazed every morning I wake up, no matter how long I've lived with God, no matter how much I've studied the Bible, I wake up every morning and I'm a space cadet all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like everything has been erased clear. <laughs> I'm just like... Because there's manna every day. That's right. You can't carry the manna. <laughs> you know what? Because we want it up here so we can pull it out any time we get it. Right. It does not come that way. It is deep inside of our spirit, and it pops out as we need it. Mm. And you're not going to, it's like manna. You won't, I mean, you, I, you know, I can just be in glory, and then the next day, and I say to people, oh, gosh, I'm ready to teach this, and when the next day comes, I can't remember a thing. <laughs> All right, I'm supposed to be that way, because yeah. you can't take what you saw then to the next, mm -hmm. because it's all new. Every day is new. Everything is new. And you don't get it all some kind of categorized in your mind. That's the problem, and you're a teacher, and that's exactly how you teach, and that's how you tell others to. And so that's normal for a teacher, but not normal, I mean. For the teacher. Yeah, for the teacher. <laughs> but even that, you know, as a teacher, my best teachable moment, I mean, the, the best teaching experiences I have, 95% of my best teaching experiences are spontaneous on the cuff. There you Usually go. a student says something in yeah. class, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Here's a teachable moment. Right, right. Here's what the Holy Spirit That's right. Also there you go. Which triggers someone else's response. Right. Which triggers someone else's response. Yes, yeah, right. And God creates something I could have never That's created. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the spontaneity we're to always live in. Yes. Yeah. And to know nothing and to be nothing and then all of a sudden be in everything. You see? <laughs> That's the way it works. Always. Mm -hmm. So get used to being empty. You're not ever empty. You feel it, though. And we're, we're meant to feel weakness. We're meant to. We're meant to be. That's all your your flesh can be is weak. I remember Norman Sylvia, I'm a perfect nothing containing the perfect I think all. I said that. I never Did heard Norman that? say that. Oh, the Lord gave me that. So that's good. what perfection <laughs> is. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's right. Say it, again. <laughs> it wasn't Norman. Say it again, Sylvia. All right. I, so what is, what does it mean? It says because, you know, perfection, to be perfect. Okay. Knowing that you're a perfect nothing, live, but yes. perfect nothing, living and expressing the perfect all. That's beautiful. You see? Yeah. We're a perfect nothing. The and the Bible says that in Galatians chapter 6. It says, if a man thinks he's something, 
when he's nothing. Well, who wants to be nothing? I mean, even the drug lords, they say, well, well I've got to be something, mm -hmm. you know. You know, they all have to be, and we Christians are the same. Well, I've got to be something. I've got to be something, you see. No, you deceive yourself. That's the deep deception. We're the vessel of the living that holds, that contains. We're the container, the temple of the living God. And he lit the privilege of his life being expressed through my vesselhood. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's just greater. It's not even a two. It's a one. It's more like head and body, one person. Yes, we have to first see the cup. We have to see that we're the cup. And, you know, Bill's really great at doing all this. And he's the, the, the deity in the cup, the coffee. He's the coffee. And we're not, and I've got it, you know, I've got a whole teaching on all that. I left it all for him, and he can do what he wants to with it. You know. I, you know what's interesting with this nothing comments, and I thought it was going to be more quiet, so forgive me. Yeah. But um, I, was, um, I was backpacking one day in Spain, and I met this girl that her dad was, like a high, high Buddhist priest. And she said, I don't believe in Buddhism. And I said, well, your dad is like, you know, like famous. Why do you feel that way? And she said, because when you have to get to a perfect state of nothingness. And when my dad mm -hmm. got to his perfect state of nothingness, my, he stopped like being intimate with my mom. Mm -hmm. He didn't want. He didn't want to feel attraction. He didn't want to feel love. Mm. He didn't want to feel anything, because mm. he just got to the nothing part. Mm -hmm. And when wow. you're telling me this, and and I, and she goes, why would I want to be just in a state of nothingness? Right. Wow. And then I'm thinking, well, the enemy doesn't invent. He copies. Mm. So he got them to the state of perfect nothingness, mm. but didn't tell them that they had to fill themselves with God. Mm -hmm. And when you fill yourself with God, you are enough. Mm -hmm. You are all the things That's that That's right. Is. Correct. And you can see the 32 names of God, and then you take the attributes of who God is. So it's not, so being a Buddhist is actually really hard because right. you're empty. <laughs> right, right. Even really hard. And desire so and sure. things that yeah. And I, I say they never get there. No. Right. No. Right. But you can never get there that way. You have to be, know that you're dead in Christ, and a dead man can't do anything of itself. To get to nothing. Yes. If you don't have Jesus. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. the last hour or so, I, I keep thinking about something Norman Grove said. And Bill, maybe you can tell me exactly what he said. But he said something like, like this union life is other centered. Mm -hmm. I forget how he says it, but the idea that, you know, to use this illustration here, before we come to Christ, we are mm -hmm. I centered. And so even mm -hmm. when we love, it's not really love. It's, That's right. It's, it's all about me. It's me doing something. You. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It drives everything everyone does. Everything's about me, 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 me. Yeah, me. exactly. That's why the idea of overcoming the flesh is ridiculous. Because right. When every heartbeat is. Yeah, that's right, right. <laughs> um, it is. So that, that's right. Then we evolve to trying. Uh -huh. where I'm going to try to be like Christ. I'm going to try to love people. That's the next reasonable but, step, right? Right. Right. Reasonable step. <laughs> but you can you can feel that, right? Like when you are trying to love people, there is a, an anxiety related to. We're we're trying to overcome the flesh, like this person's mirror came to me, but I'm going to love them anyway. So I've got this, you know. <laughs> Plastic smile on my face. And Plastic, always, fantastic. And so I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to love and having a lot of hard time with that. And then we evolve to resting where we, we you know, I, one of my students asked me once, you know, the scripture it says, Jesus became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, you know, I am perfectly righteous. And one of my students said, are you saying that you're perfect, Mr. Norman? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, no. I said, what I'm saying is that I'm loved perfectly. God's love for me is mm -hmm. perfect. So I can enter into that rest. I don't need to strive to live the Christian life anymore. I would say I am perfect. 
Well, I think that's the next level. Right, but it is. The, so now when I can come to rest, no longer striving, that has to be another thing for the rest of my life to fulfill what Christ is already fulfilled in my life. I can just be. You be yourself. Now, mm -hmm. I can now enter what Norman is talking about, mm -hmm. where I can become love incarnate, so to speak. In other words, I can become other centered because I'm mm -hmm. not consumed with me, me, me. I need to fill up me, me, me. It's me. other I love. I to enter into that rest where I can just put the stress out, <laughs> and the, the life of Christ in me is other focused. I can be mm -hmm. present with people mm -hmm. because I'm not consumed with. Me. me. My anxieties, my mm -hmm. insufficiencies, all the problems going on in my life, and what I want. And what are they thinking of me? What are they? What are they thinking? What have I done? Have I done this right? Have I done that right? Okay, you, you're doing the whole chart. That's great. Just teach it to your students. <laughs> all right, but I'm I'm still back here. That was really good, and it is. And you you will be. Able, that's why I do this. I say stick. That's a foundational truth. I mean, everybody use it. It's for everybody, you know, anybody who wants to use it. So, okay, let's look at the, the false, the phantom eye. As you're doing this, just to stay on the phantom eye, because I remember that eye is the only eye I've known. That's what I just said, right. My consciousness. Right. So the voice is me. I think it's me. Yes. And that's that hidden Yes, it is. That hidden I Satan. Yes, it is. And that was that's what was so tricky about it. And I mm -hmm. remember having spent some time with you and I caught that thing. I was in the hotel room when I got the idea of getting some booze or something like that. Something horrible that I should not be doing. And I was like, yes. and I, ah there you are. I looked in the mirror. I'm like, there it is. There you are. <laughs> There's that eye, right? Right. It sounds like me. Right. It's the only eye that I've known since birth. Because he speaks to us in first person. In first person. It sounds like me. Yeah. You were like, it sounds so. like the real me. And it's not the real you. It's the fake. It's the false you. It's the liar you. It's a, it's a satanic you that you, we've lived with all of our life. Okay. So and where do we find it? Look. Okay. Paul in Romans 7. This is very important. How, how, do, how, do, how do we find this? Okay, he does it by the process of elimination. That's how a lot of people teach. <laughs> process of, it's what it's not first. Yeah, yeah. And he does that, you know, is, is it the law? No, it's not the law. Well, um, okay, then, but I, I love what he says in verse 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual. He's not making the law evil. You know, people do that when they're under grace, then they make the law evil. Like, oh, oh, that's, oh, that's, you're, you know. No, the law has a purpose. It drives us to the end, you see. And so, but the law is spiritual, he says. Okay. But I'm carnal, sold under sin. Paul, you just said you were dead to sin over here in the previous chapter. What are you doing? Now you're sold under sin. Why are you still bound up? Why are you in bondage? And cannot keep the law. What it, what is the real problem? The real problem is coming right here, and that's wh that's where that independent I gets realized right here. For that which I do, I allow not. In other words, I don't want to do it. You know, I had people when I was going through this saying, "Plus, I was not manifesting the fruit of the spirit," and I just kept saying that was not who I was. Well, they said you're just using that as a license to sin. You really want to sin, and you can just pop that off. That's not who I am. I said, are you kidding me? I hated what I was doing. I hated it, and I could not stop it, could not change it. For what I would, that I do not. There, there, I, there I was, and you've, there, you've been there. Some of you have already been there. I always say if you haven't, someday you'll go there. We all have to go to this valley, really. But what I hate, that's I do. That's it. I hated it. I could not conquer myself. This self, this false self, this satanic self can conquer it. If then I do that which is not, I would not, I consent in the law that it's good. Wait a minute. He's starting to get revelation. Wait a minute. I agree that I shouldn't do these things. I agree. And I don't want to do them. 
So I'm looking at maybe he's thinking, maybe there's a part of me that's okay, that's not the one doing it. Maybe it's not the human me. Maybe the human me is okay because I don't want to. Do, I'm ch choosing not to. You see? So maybe it's not the human me. It's not the me I thought I always was. What is it then? Let's get it. <laughs> so then I do that which I would not. I consent to the law of it. It is good, and I'm agreeing. Now then, it is no longer me, the human self, the human me. There's something else doing the sinning and not me. I can remember when I was in deep depression and hated myself because I couldn't stop doing it. I would have some thoughts that were so bizarre. Mm. And one day I thought, there is no way my mind could have thought that up. Some, right. Something else is being fed into me. That's when I started getting it. Yeah, yeah. This, there, there's something, there, there's, what is this coming into me thinking these thoughts? The most bizarre, they would lock me up if I ever said it. You see? So then it is no longer the human me. Now he's beginning to be free. Human self is not the problem. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, just hold it. Okay, now that doesn't, you can interrupt because I'll always tell you. Because <laughs> I'm right in the middle of a, giving you the answer. Okay. But sin that dwells in me. Okay, everybody says, see, told you we still have the old nature. Don't they say that? Don't they use that to say that? They do. That's not what this is saying. This is not what this is saying. Sin is really a noun. It's really a person. It's really Satan. It's not me. It's really Satan in me. Where is he? Is he in my spirit? No. He's saying, because he tells you later, where is he? He's more on you than in you. Because you're in Christ, in your spirit. We just studied that last night. Okay? He's on you. He's on your flesh. He's, he's misusing your members, your fleshly members, yeah. your body and your soul. He's misusing you. That's unrighteousness. Righteousness is the right use of my soul and body. That's what righteousness is. Unrighteousness is misuse. Now, I always think it's me doing it. I'm taking the responsibility. I repent. I kneel down. I cry out, please, you know, but it never was me. It never was me. It was Satan deceiving me, making me think I'm separate from who I really am, Christ in me. Right. And therefore, it, it, and so then I start operating, and then I start trying to be good again, or trying to conquer it, or right. trying to keep the law, or trying to be a better person, or try to improve myself. That's why Norman Grubb did say the biggest lie in Christianity is self-improvement. Mm -hmm. And that is the truth. That is the truth. Because it never was the human you. It was Satan disguised as you. I call it a phantom self. I thought of that. It's a phantom. It's not the truth. It's a lie. Uh -huh. You're living a lie. You see? Yeah. It's the lie. That's why, that's why Colossians says, lie not one to another because you have put off the old man. You already got him put off. How? Through the cross. We're going to talk about that next. And with his deeds. With his deeds, which are your sin, the sins that come out. See, root and fruit. That's what you're dead to, root and fruit. All, the root. All right. So even in Colossians, when it starts naming some of the sins, it says, but now don't lie. Don't say you're still a sinner. Don't say you're still bound up in all this. Mm -mm. Don't you understand what happened at the cross? When he said, uh, it is finished, what happened? What happened? He was made sin on your behalf. That we're, we're, we're really going to, I don't know if we have time now, because I want to do the cross, really. I want it, because that's where we get our deliverance. We're delivered through his death. And we're, tra and we're made new creations through his resurrection. But we're totally delivered. And when we, but, and, and see, the verses that you're quoting just a minute ago in Second Corinthians, says there's three tenses of deliverance. 
We have been delivered, we are delivered, and we will be. When are we not delivered? In the cross, because he's already done it. See, so the devil is deceiving us all the time, lying to us, and we're believing it. When we believe it, we help bring it into being, really, because we're giving it power. Satan has no power over us, no legal rights whatsoever to us, ever. No legal rights. We have all the legal rights. Go before the courts to heaven and find that one out. <laughs> I mean, you have to be legal to go before the courts of heaven. <laughs> you do. Right. That's exactly right. And you are. We do have those legal rights. Because it never was me. It was Satan disguised as Sylvia Pierce. And that's what I hated. So I never, so it wasn't me that hated me. Satan hated me and projected his hate that what's in him is projected onto me. Now, you know, we know that. We've seen that in politics and a lot of things, you know, where. I, I just have to ask, it's affirmative saying, I remember our friend Mark Burble said to Norman Dub once, oh, Norman, I see. It's not I but Christ, but it's not I but sin. Norman said, you always keep me from forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> Most people get not I but Christ a little bit. They get that. Yeah. Not I but sin. It's oh, I just say it's oh okay. Yeah. But what, is, what does that mean? Yeah. This is the negative. There is a positive counterpart to this negative. Not I. Okay. So it's never the I. What he's bringing out is, thank you. Thank you, Bill. That's right. Okay. It's never been I. Okay. Well, even when in Galatians 2.20, it says, it's not I, but Christ. Now here it's saying, not I, but sin. So has it ever been the I? Right. It wasn't being right, righteous. It was never I. Why is it? And when we, see, this is what we Christians do. Well, I know when I do, when somebody says, oh, you're such a great leader and you, you give us such light and this and that. And you say, well, it's, it's really Christ in me. You say that. You say, oh, it's not really me. It's really Christ in me. If you're really a true Christian, you'll say that somehow, you know. But then if you really sin, you say, oh, yeah, that was me. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Don't you? And I would even say, in my own experience with that, even after with a lot yeah. of this revelation, um, I would notice when I'm feeling guilty, mm -hmm. that's that old self trying to maintain a sense of power. Mm -hmm. It's that false... It is. It's that false self. Like, what am I feeling guilty for? Right, right. It's so he can stay alive and not die. That's right. You know, the death is, there's no one to feel guilty. There, there's no one there to feel there's guilty. There's no one there to feel guilty. I Get know. the hell out, you know? I always say to Satan, I say, who are you talking to? I, I, I don't live in this house. Christ does. You talking to him? Oh, no, he's not talking to him. Not talking to him. Okay, go ahead, try to. Are you talking to Christ? Because I don't live here. <laughs> See? It's Christ that lives. Even my mother dying of cancer said, said that. She said, Sylvia, this isn't happening to me. It's happening to Jesus. Think of that. Mm. Never give the devil one ounce of... That's what we do. It's not that we don't see him. Of course we do. We don't give him power, though. We depower him. He has... No power. He has no legal rights. No power whatsoever. We put, the, we give Jesus all the power and the life. You know, give him, and we focus on the, the, you know, like you all, everybody quotes that, you know, that greater is He that's in me, that's in the world. Well, we have to truly know that he, there's a greater me in me <laughs> than what the devil is saying. So it never has been an I separate, a separate I. That's a lie. That is the big lie of the whole universe that the Christian world, it's still a big secret. It's, that's why we call it the liberating secret. shouldn't be a secret. Right. We should shout it to the house, house top. Everybody. I mean, wherever you are, go tell it. Go tell it. That's what Jesus would say. Once you see it, once you see the light, go tell it. Go say it. I mean, you might not be liked and you might, you know, all that, but who are they not liking? Because you, you don't live there any longer. <laughs> it's Christ. <laughs> and when they don't like it, who's that in them? 
Not like it. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a direct expression of the religious spirit. It is. About I and my ministry and mm. how gifted I am, how anointed I am. I know that. The nothingness. <laughs> uh, you were talking about, you know, <laughs> and Joel Fabian from Mormons, like, yeah, good, good luck with that. <laughs> like the message that I am nothing. Like <laughs> it's the message of death. Um, but we surrender unto nothingness so that Christ can become nothing mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. And I think the vision is we are called into union with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like we're being liberated from religious activity mm -hmm. in order to connect with God. Yes. He's he's uh, already connected with longer, you. No, I am perpetually 24-7 in union with you. Every breath that I take. Mm -hmm. Negative, positive, doesn't matter how I feel. That's the fullness of life. That's wholeness. Because mm -hmm. when you recognize I am always with mm -hmm. him, then I can just let go. Mm -hmm. But you can start accepting your negatives and not fretting over it yeah. when you wake up and you have those thoughts. Right. Oh, it's you. Oh, okay. You see, <laughs> temptation to me is like this. I have a big back porch. It's a part of our house and all sliding glass doors. So if a storm comes, I just sit in my chair. I don't go out there and try to fix the storm. Mm. I don't go and try to fix my thoughts. I just let the storm go by. Mm -hmm. I sit there and rest and watch how what God's going to bring out of it. It's always, God, what are you up to today? Mm -hmm. So I wake up with all that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, here, okay, mm -hmm. this is kind of normal, okay. You know, I'm not going to try to get out of it. What you fight will fight you back, and it will get worse. What you try to eliminate, don't eliminate it. It will work together for good right. and bring glory. So you accept it. That, and so you finally, you just, oh, that's really being you. I'm just going to accept myself. I don't feel like doing this today. I don't even like myself. Okay. <laughs> it's a better decision. You, you know how I taught my children? My mother, you know, was like, you could never even not like me. You know, I mean, you could never, you know, kids <laughs> sass their parents. No way could I ever sass my parents. So, and I thought, I don't want to raise my children that way. And my, my daughters especially. And so I said, you know what? Um, you're not going to like me all the time. I don't like you all the time. And I said, uh, and that's okay. I said, I don't even like myself all the time. So th that's okay. That's kind of normal. I tell you what, I'm not going to let you sass me, though. I never would. I said, you go to your room, throw rocks at my picture, all, say what you want to, but know this, we really love each other. We're a family, and we're a family of faith, a family of love. And so go ahead and be free to dislike. I'm telling you, it freed them up. It bound me up because it was the opposite. I couldn't even not. And I didn't like my mother. She was always condemning me. You see, I didn't. And because I had to act like I was okay with it, with the plastic, fantastic face. I wrote that down. Somebody else told me that. That came from Therese Thurston. <laughs> I like to say when things come from other people, because they do. I mean, God just brings it, you know, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, all right, then what is the human self? It's neutral. It's not evil, because it's, it's Satan deceiving you, making you think you are. You're the sin. You're the sins, and you got to conquer it. No, he's the sinner. He that, it says, he that has sinned is of the devil. You can't sin apart from the devil. The devil is sinning from the beginning. It's the devil that sins through us from the beginning. It's not even us sinning. We're cooperating, though. We're a part of it. I mean, I'm still guilty. If I sin, I'm still guilty. But I'm an accomplished. And, you know, Norman always gave us that about the... Give the bank thing. That's what I'm getting ready to do. Yeah, an accomplished. Well... Okay, two people are going to, they connive. They're going to, we're going to rob a bank. Okay, you, you sit in the car. I'll go in. I'll, I'll do it. 
but you, you and, and as soon as I do it, we got to get out of here fast. Okay. So somebody goes in and somebody sits in the car. Okay, there's, there's one passive and then there's one active. The one active is, is absolutely sinning. Is the one that's passive sinning as well? Yes. Now, why are we passive? We're, do, we're letting Satan have this in us. <laughs> See? We're letting Satan. Okay, both are guilty. The primary sinner is Satan. You see, sinning through me. So when I sin, is it me sinning? Yes, I can't say that I'm totally eliminated. And to but no, it never. it's not me. It's, sa it's Satan. It's you again. It's you. And then after a while, we, we start renewing our mind to the truth. That I never was. It never was me. It was always him disguising himself as me. So, but so this says it's not I, but Satan that does the sinning. Okay, just like Galatians two twenty says it's not I, but Christ that does the good. That's why the next verse says, "For I know that in me dwelleth, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing." So there's no good thing that dwells in my flesh, and no evil thing. I say no. There's no evil thing. I'm cleansed from all sin. Satan has no right in my humanity, in my flesh. Right. Yes, but you agreed. You agreed. You were the you were the one sitting in the car. You were the one sitting in the car. How can two walk together unless they agree? Right. So you know what faith is agreeing with God. Do you know what? what, what Actually, it's faith in reverse, really. It really is still faith. It's still faith. It is. Agreeing with the devil. You're doing it by faith. Wow. I had a friend that came to me, and I knew her husband, and, he, you know, he was not a saint. He was saved, though, you know, but, he, you know. But anyway, she wanted to vent, and, you know, I let people vent. Women have to vent things. Okay. Then finally I said, well, you know, he really is a Christian, Lisa. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. I said, why don't we say how God sees him then? How, how he really is. Why do we, you know, let's, let's just take a leap of faith. Oh, I can't have that kind of faith. I said, uh, I said, but Lisa, you're already having faith. You're already doing it. You're in faith now. But you're in faith in the negative. You see? And I said, you can just switch it and start saying the truth. Oh, I can't do that. I said, no, it's not that you can't, you won't. That's the problem. You and refuse it. And guess what? <laughs> guess what? She had ended up having an affair with my daughter's husband. Mm. She lost her family. She lost her husband. She lost respect. I mean, mm. and she would not do it. She refused. And in doing it, she's the one that lost. Yeah. I wanted to make one comment mm. about the I had tremendous difficulty discussing this about the flesh, like no confidence in the flesh, which we've mentioned a million times, you know, we've read it a million times, at least I have, and um, I was talking with Brother Mark, and he opens up his mouth, and it's just all light that day, it's pretty fun, and, um, and all of a sudden, I just saw myself in church, in my church experience, where I experienced so much rejection, by default, because I didn't have the correct flesh. I didn't have the acceptable form right. of the soul right. to fit in into this, their mold. Into their mold, and it was incredibly shaming, mm -hmm. and it was incredibly depressing, and all that stuff was suppressed. And when I got that, the Lord healed me in that moment with that revelation. And I popped like a cork, and just all the grief of it came out. Wow. And I wept so hard. Wow. And this was in 2014. Hmm. It wasn't that long, though. Yeah. And I wept so hard, and all, and it's been years since I've been in that kind of a church setting. 
God, I was so free from that. But to, to know what a tremendous revelation that is. And of course, the same to, to not what you're saying, what you did with your friend, going, you don't have to address your husband that way. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. We're seeing all these problems, mm -hmm. but let's take that leap of faith mm -hmm. and see him as Christ. That's it. And see the Christ in That's him. right. And there might be some power in that. Yeah, well, yeah. there is power in that, mm -hmm. you see. It changes you first. Yes. It might not change the person yet, but it changes you, changes your point of view of that person, mm -hmm. you see, because really, otherwise, it's all about me, just like you said. It was all about her, what she had to suffer and victim and all that stuff. Yeah, I had that. I had a victim complex, you know, blaming my mother for everything of my adult life because I blamed her for all my fears and insecurities because she just, she did blame me all the time and she was mad. I mean, I eventually led my mother to Christ. So, but before that, you know, there's a young person. You are a victim when you're a young person. But then after a while, you like to be a victim because you can always blame her for everything you do, you see? And so the day came, I did lead her to Christ. And when she found the Lord, I mean, she did a bunch of stuff. She kidnapped my child and blah, 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 blah. All, I, you know, I, people would realize how upset I would be, and I would get justified if everybody, if I would tell you the full story. You'd feel sorry for me, see? Okay, so I said to the Lord, um, I think she, she could apologize to me for what she did. Like, I never did anything. And it was always her. Well, the Lord says, why does she have to apologize for what I call perfect for you? I said, wait a minute. Don't you know what she did? Don't you know because of her I've got all these scars of insecurity and fear and it's her? Really, it wasn't really her or was it the devil that did all that? And my soul is like the thorns and thistles and not like the Garden of Eden with peace thorns and thistles and deep holes of insecurity and fears. Don't you see that? Oh, yeah. That's necessary for you. Why? Because through those scars, I'm going to heal you, and I'm going to fill those holes of insecurity up with myself and with the power of, the, of, of my resurrected life and raise you and heal you. And in that healing, you'll be able to give to others the same kind of healing you see and without it you would never be able to identify mm. never you see and so I started to say then it's perfect then I realized if we don't make our past somehow put it back into God and what he meant for our life then we carry it around like baggage and you have to go to psychology to figure right. it all out right, right. and it keeps you in the same place it right. keeps you you're carrying those bags of Oh, my, my, my mom, my dad, my life. Oh, my gosh. You see? Drop them. They're perfect for us. You see? And that's hard to say. What if you were, oh, my God, sexually abused like the little kids we're hearing today and all that kind of stuff? Oh, my gosh. Let me tell you, there is no evil that God is not greater. Even uh, Corey Timboom said that. I think her, her sister said that, oh, Corey, there's no hole that God is not deeper that can, can raise us out of. There is nothing too awful that God cannot absolutely bring us out of. And I know a woman from South Africa, she's talking and she ministers to those people that have been so horribly sexually abused and all that kind of stuff and been sacrificed, seen sacrificed to Satan and all that. They've seen it all. And they've got God have mercy. Their minds are split and... And she ministers to them, and she know, she will get to the point where the door was open, and then they'll close it. And she, she is a healer of that. And it's the most people. I've, I've talked to a psychologist. She said you can't ever get to those kids. They're so split in their mind. You know, you can never. And this woman says, "Oh no, uh, uh, no." I mean, she's a she is she's we got a lot to learn about that kind of healing. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's going to be a lot of her name is Amanda Byes, B-U-Y-S, hmm. and she's from South Africa. She's white, and she really understands the deman demonic strongholds that's mm -hmm. happened in the split personalities and, mm -hmm. and all that. 
amazing. Okay, because we are healers. We're healers. I mean, but one thing I love that she says, you don't try to bring down principalities and powers. Don't try to heal everybody. No, you don't touch it. You can make it worse. They could project it onto you. You could get worse. Mm -hmm. No, you stay in your lane, <laughs> like we always say. You give what you stay in, because that's where you have the authority. What God has given, you have the right there. You have the, you have, that is your right. That is your place of authority. And you stay there. I mean, even uh, what was the, the uh, prophet that died? And, but he always said, um, he, he, how did he say it? Um, he was talking about don't fight with, don't try to bring down principalities and powers. Uh, oh, John Sud Paul Jackson. Yes. Uh, what, did he, what was the name of his book? Uh, Casualties, Casualties of War. War. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Casualties of war, you know, think, you know, and it's really, I think we're still kind of prideful, like, oh, well, now I can do this. Do not go out of what God has called you to do. If there's another little avenue here and there, there might be. That's because it's God-led. Right. Never, and, you know, and so don't, okay, now, okay, over to Louisville, I'm going to call, mm -mm, cas <laughs> no. Let me tell, I want to tell you all something. I knew a missionary. He was a part of Reese Howes in her, uh, over in Swansea, Wales. I've been there. I've been to the house, the Reese Howes house. I know that you read that book. Everybody ought to read Reese Howes' Intercessor by Norman Grubb. Okay. This man was like a second generation. It was like Samuel Howes that was the mentor over him. That was Reese Howes' son that he had to give away, if you, you read the book, he gave that child away to be raised by some other people so he could dedicate his whole life to this intercession. So Samuel, Samuel's gone now. I met Samuel when I was over there. Okay, this man was Brian Mason, a dear, dear, dear Christian man. And actually, he said that Samuel laid hands on him to be, you know, the, inter the intercessor. So, and I, it's true, he... he he was. He was English, and he lived in Wales for a while, and then I think he moved to Scotland. Okay. Now, you think this cannot happen, because greater is he. And we know that verse, and we think oh, this can't be. Okay. He starts going to Africa, and then he goes to South. He's, he's called. He says he's called to go to South Sudan. That's the most evil place in Africa. And evidently, the witch doctors and all, they got wind that he was coming to, to bring the gospel, really. But he went by himself. Before he even got to the border, they had, ever, they had sacrificed to Satan. They had killed children to sacrifice that he would not come. And he gets so sick, he cannot, he has to go back home. Eventually, he dies. You say this stuff can't happen. Mm -hmm. You've got to, mm, yes, it can. And he was a great Christian man, precious. Now, okay, is that lost? I say no. God will use that sacrifice to bring revival there. I don't care if it is the worst place in the world mm -hmm. because Satan will never win, and God will use it. Yeah. And he suffered greatly. So I think we... We have to know what we're led to and what is somebody else, you know. Mm -hmm. have, we have to know that. We have to stay where God has us. Yeah. You see, we have total authority, and he has no right over us. And, you know, we learn all that. So I just told you that just because of, you know, that, what, that needless casualties of war. Mm -hmm. and, you, and I think, well, what, why, what went wrong? Because Reese House was always looking for success. He'd get people. He wasn't going to pray for people and have not success. He's going to have it, when, doesn't he? Success, you know? Okay. And so, so you, you know, you try to, I just leave it to the Lord. I just leave that to the Lord and know that God will use it. I know that. 
but it's just always a warning. Don't get into areas that you don't need to. God might, might he would say this though, even if I die, I'm going to do it. Okay, that's right. And it did, they did kill him. They killed 